and welcome back to You Reach On 120. Surprise, surprise, I'm back for another video. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be in the uh, 122nd video of the 120 video series talking about uh, money, uh, because money is an important issue uh, when you start living on your own especially. If you, if you manage to somehow uh, stay with your parents uh, and uh, have found a, play, a way to get university paid for, maybe by a scholarship or something like that. Maybe this video isn't quite for you yet, but uh, the, the idea here is that you should have access to money, <laughs> in that your life is going to be very uh, unpleasant without some access to income. Some access to money, some access to a source of money, perhaps a job to get money, uh, a bank account with some money in it, uh, maybe some Bitcoin. It's, uh, you know, 2010s, you can uh, kind of accept Bitcoin as a type of money, you know, if you're mining it somehow, uh, or, or something of that kind. But the important part is that you should have access to some if you're going to be a student at university. Um, maybe even in general, because uh, unless you've figured a way to survive without it, which is incredibly rare, uh, you're probably going to notice that there are going to be things that you're going to want to do, uh, and that those things are going to require you. And yes, you can sometimes get away with uh, doing things, do it yourself, uh, doing things yourself, making things, uh, having access to uh, you know the, the things you need without money. Uh, and there's a lot of things you can do without money, like you know nature is free. You can go for a walk in the forest if you're living in the forest and it's completely free. Uh, you can go uh, drink out of Lake Superior if you boil it. Um, but of course, if you want to boil it, you need some kind of fuel uh, to, to start a fire which I guess there's enough around if you really know where to look. Uh, but you're going to run into trouble fairly quickly with time, with your ability to wash things, because you're going to want to buy some soap, and that soap costs money. Uh, if you go, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever you know, gone to the extent of listening to the Sean Kennedy Wear Body Armor rant. Uh, it's a you know, good rant worth checking out. Uh, but as uh, one uh, of my kind of former colleagues in that particular uh, organization, um, pointed out that in order to get body armor, usually you need some money. And unless you can find some body armor that falls off of a truck somewhere, uh, the, usually it, it, it you acquire it by acquiring some money, by working for the corporate political, and then uh, using that money to purchase your body armor. And so there, there's this kind of inherent contradiction, going back to the video on uh, contradiction, uh, that um, it just doesn't seem to add up why, why you would want to acquire this body armor if you, in order to you know, make use of it, uh, had to kind of sow the seeds of your own destruction, in, in a sense. Uh, but regardless of how the, the you know, intrinsic uh, contradictions of capitalism uh, apply, uh, you want access to some money, and you're going to want to do something. I d I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you how to solve this problem, because it's a problem you as an individual are going to have to face. Uh, and as much as I'd like to say, we should avoid this problem, or we should, you know, find a better way of doing it, so we, we should use Ripple so we don't have to think of things in terms entirely of money, although Ripple, of course, supports a, a monetary view of things. Uh, regardless of all that, as an individual, as a student, as a person who's going into university, uh, or thinking about going to university, or doing something related to university in your life, uh, or, or even just thinking about what it was that you could do if you went into university, regardless of any of that, uh, you got to have some coin. you got to get some money, you got to have some cash. Uh, so that the, the really, really simple problems that it can solve for you uh, can be solved, so that you don't get to be filtered out by the Great White Combine for not having enough of this stuff. Uh, because it will happen. You can be kicked out of the place that you live. You can be uh, starved. Uh, you, the food bank can run out of money. The food bank in Regina almost ran out. Uh, they were very close when I left the city to bankruptcy. Uh, and we're kind of being held on the hook for rent that they didn't owe or didn't, didn't earn or something like that. But regardless of what it was, you couldn't depend on it. You couldn't expect that there'd be even a cold meal of rotting food available uh, from the food bank even uh, if you had run out of money uh, because they just were at the end of their life, at the end of their rope. And yes, there may be uh, churches and things that you can rely on, but at the end of the day, uh, things get progressively more and more unpleasant the more broke that you get and the more uh, decisions you have to painfully make uh, going back to the horrible horrible freedom video 
uh, they will get more and more difficult the, the more your, your money situation uh, becomes desperate. Uh, and there are all sorts of trade-offs that you really don't want to have to make uh, if you have to choose between, for example, eating and having rent, or uh, having rent and having access to clean water, uh, or you know, having rent and, for example, living in a house that's filled with sewage. Uh, I know people have had to put up with that particular problem, uh, or rats, uh, or, or vermin, or cockroaches, or whatever it is. The, the, the nightmare situation that you, that you can get into, there are a lot of things that you don't even want to imagine that you would have to do if your money supply doesn't sustain itself in the right kind of way. Uh, and so think ahead a little bit. Uh, don't necessarily, you know, just screw over your you know, next door neighbor for it. Don't just necessarily just steal it or something like that. Uh, you know, you can put a little bit of you know, thought into how you're going to you know, make do in the long run. But I can tell you right now that if you have a sustainable money supply, you will be able to be a better person in your day-to-day -day life, at least, because the choices that you'll be able to make, you won't have to make that trade-off uh, that kind of ethically compromises you if you have a little bit of savings to kind of buffer you against the consequences of a seriously bad uh, choice. Uh, and so that is one thing that you'd, you want to you know, think of when, when you're deciding whether to do something for money or to not do something for money, uh, certainly on that level, but also on the level of just bare survival. Um, you know, you are not that far from being homeless. Uh, you are not that far from your local economy collapsing, uh, your local landlords going out of money, kicking you out, uh, etc. And things can go very bad in a hurry if you don't get your situation uh, sorted out. Um, and I have lived, in some parts of my life I've lived fairly comfortably, some parts I've lived extremely uncomfortably, uh, but the, the, the bottom line is you, there are a lot of problems that are really easy to solve uh, if, with even just a little bit of money, like just having enough money to buy soap and shampoo, that alone, right there, you, you will go so much further if you don't smell like a you know, dying goat than if you do. And you will go so much further if you can afford to buy the textbooks in university if you choose to be a university student. And so somehow you have to figure out what other people want you to do for that money uh, and figure ways to you know, live with yourself and to, to accomplish those goals um, and to you know, go be become politically involved, figure out ways to get the government to not uh, you know, use this as an excuse to do horrible things. Uh, but regardless of all that stuff, uh, just consider, consider how important this is. You know, Sean Kennedy made, made this claim too, but I want to make it, you know, I, I want to join that chorus of people saying, you know, consider the economics of your situation. Make sure that regardless of what you, your choices are in life, your life choices, your uh, career path, your, all of, the, of that stuff, that one of the things that you think about is know whether you are going to be making money and how much money that is going to be and if that is going to be enough to survive, to survive, to make a go of things and to be a decent person at the end of the day. Uh, and so yes, there are uh, you know, trade-offs that you're going to have to make, but hopefully uh, this is identifying one side of them for you. This is related to some of the other videos that we've taken. Because you will notice that your grades will drop if you do not have enough money to sustain yourself. And one of the things that grades are going to measure is how much money that you have to solve the problems that to get in the way of you having higher grades. So for example, if you can't eat, if you can't think properly because you haven't got enough blood sugar, because you haven't been eating properly, uh, or maybe not even blood sugar, maybe your iron level or some base nutrient that you're just not getting enough of because the food you're buying uh, because you don't have enough money to buy the, the decent food uh, that you know your, your grades will drop for it. And so go back to the grades video on that. Uh, you will find that you will procrastinate more if you're hungry. Uh, you will have, uh, unless you get to the you know, really, really hungry level where you're just kind of surviving, um, it's, very, it's a lot easier to procrastinate than justify procrastinating uh, if you have to 
make these horrible, horrible trade-offs at every single level. Um, and that's how one of the ways that you can get hooked on, for example, Reddit and Twitter and Facebook, because these three things are free in terms of your money. And so you can end up spending more and more time on these three things, uh, even if it's not healthy or productive to do so, because there's no cost to it. And so some of the things that you might want to do instead cost money. They cost some things. Some, there's some ticket price to get in. And so you end up uh, spending more and more time on Reddit, and that doesn't really uh, accomplish all that much. Uh, it, it's related to the different approaches we do because there are some approaches that have a little bit of cost to them. Some have a lot of cost, and you're going to have to make a trade-off of which uh, approach is appropriate for you, but you're not going to be able to make that, you're not get going to be able to take that up approach if you don't even have a little bit uh, to your advantage. Uh, it's related, uh, as mentioned, to the Great White Combine video, because it can be used to filter you if you don't have enough. related to the all the data video because one of the things that money will allow you to do uh, is it is a clue to um, what people are interested in uh, giving up and what people are interested in uh, giving up things for. Uh, if you, uh, for example, uh, work at a telephone company uh, or something like that, providing internet service, you will notice that people will pay decent amounts of money for internet service. And I think that you, too, should be able to play, pay and be interested in a little bit uh, for Vincer, for a negative Vincer video, and uh, Tim Berners-Lee's uh, World Wide Web. Uh, you should be able, and will, to, to support those things financially. That's going to take some money, but you'll also notice that other people will feel that way, too, and so that at least there's some feedback in order to kind of suggest to you what you could be doing to help other people's lives. That's obviously not all money does. Money does a lot of things. Uh, and there's been thousands of years of thinking about money by what it does to people. Uh, but that's one of the things that it does. So it's worth thinking about that. Uh, it's... Let's see what else we got. Okay, I'm listening to you. It's starting to get so long. You want to be careful about gambling. And going back to the gambler's fallacy, uh, you want to be careful about how much money you put into risky things. Unfortunately, there is literally no investment that you could make that is risk-free. If you go back, if you go into uh, economics and learn, uh, sometimes they will claim that government bonds are risk-free, uh, or especially inside of a country that government bonds are risk-free, or maybe that the U.S. government bonds are risk-free, uh, until you live through a great financial crisis. Uh, that seems like reasonable advice in that the government bonds set the kind of default risk level. Uh, and then, of course, once you see a, a, a country default on their bonds, uh, then suddenly it isn't all that risk-free, and that there is just this low level of risk there, even for countries that have uh, a, a fair amount of kind of, um, a fair amount of things going for them, like the United States, and, and how the world has, for a long time, used their currency as the reserve currency of the world. So yes, the, you can save your money, uh, but maybe worth uh, thinking about the, the risk inherent in the means uh, in which you, you, you save it. So, for example, you, you could avoid uh, sovereign default risk by putting it into Bitcoin, but then you have a whole different kettle of fish and a whole different level of problems to deal with in terms of securing your computer and securing the, uh, the surrounding uh, economy around it, uh, because a lot of things can go wrong in a hurry uh, if you don't do that. Uh, so. The and that, of course, is related to the gambler's fallacy in that if you just assume that you know, certain things have gone in a certain direction in an economy a certain, uh, or over the past, uh, you, you should not expect, based purely upon that, that the, the future will be like the past. Uh, and yes, you can constrain the possibilities a little bit, uh, but you don't want to commit the gambler's fallacy when, when thinking about where you're putting your money. Uh, it's related to uh, what else we got? Discussed in surf, discussed the yeah, World Wide Web. Uh, it's worth pointing out that the what money has meant has changed with time, uh, and that uh, it used to be that money primarily meant gold, and then there was paper 
that uh, represented that group. And then eventually, mm -hmm. the money gradually came to me in that paper uh, until it became primarily computer uh, le or numbers on computer ledgers representing that paper. Uh, and now it is slowly starting to move from those particular ledgers to a public global uh, ledger such as Bitcoin, uh, and then you know the future will probably have some completely different way of looking at that. But just to point out that yes, it is important to have some, to have some money to your credit. But you, the watcher of this video, unfortunately live in a period of time where what this is and how it works is changing. And so you want to learn a little bit about the history of money, uh, the kinds of thought uh, that have or the kinds of thoughts that people have come up with in describing how it works uh, and how it can be saved and risk uh, and probability theory and that sort of thing. But just as a you know, point that things are changing, so maybe we're uh, putting some effort into learning a little bit about how this works. So that when you save it, it doesn't just disappear on its own. Uh, whether or not it's still in your account and it's just not worth anything, as in the case of Zimbabwe, uh, or perhaps maybe it's in an account that you can't access it, like an empty box. Uh, and then maybe there's more complicated ways that things could go horribly, horribly wrong that I am not even aware of yet, uh, perhaps relating to uh, the uh, Turing completeness and that sort of thing, going back to the Alan Turing video. Uh, and it's also worth pointing out that uh, to some degree, uh, this, is, this thing is going to determine uh, what groups are successful or not, and so in addition to just being, you know, you as an individual, uh, you as part of whatever you want to support, uh, are also going to want to have access to something. So all the, everything that I said, all the problems that you're going to run into as an individual, there will also be an equivalent set of problems that a group uh, that you would even be interested in, in, in partaking in, whether that be the group of silly straws the group of computer science students, the you know group of uh, people in who are building Kales, the operating system, go check it out. Um, regardless of what what it is that interests you, there's probably a group of other people who are interested in it, and those groups are going to run into problems. They're going to not be able to physically, maybe not be able to communicate, not be able to have their important members who know things about the group survive, uh, not be able to you know bypass just these little tiny barriers that money will allow you to get through. Of course, not everything will, you know, revolves around money. Certainly, the vast majority of the world does not. But just little problems that are just tragic when you suddenly find that, for example, the Linux from Scratch project has a, a cost of running their bandwidth and servers. It's not a very high cost. It's like, I think it's like $100 or $1,000 a month or something like that. But compared to what they do, it's just this tiny amount, just insignificant amount, and unfortunately, nobody's covering that cost. And so there, there's probably some guy who's getting really sick of just continually paying for everyone in the world's ability to learn about Linux. Uh, and I mean, it's great that he's doing this, but it's just sooner or later that that is going to be a problem. We want to be able to watch out for those kinds of problems and be a little bit ready for when they happen. The Electronic Frontier Foundation is always asking for money because you know, engaging in lawsuits to protect our rights to use computers and technology on the internet is a really expensive thing. If you can get at least part of the way uh, a, around those problems by funding lawyers to you know, defend our rights and defend, defend our technology. And so, again, this is something that money is going to be useful for. Uh, and there's that. Uh, and so, in, in general, uh, it, it's not the best or the most important thing in the world. Uh, but it's something that you want to consider. It's something that you want to have access to. Uh, so go out, get a job, <laughs> or do something. You know, just go go acquire some of this stuff uh, because you will probably regret it. You know, sad to say. Uh, if you have any questions or would like suggestions on how to acquire this in your day-to-day -day life, uh, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. And uh, as usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address so that you can help. Uh, me and my uh, supply of money uh, as going forward as we, you know, for producing this and other videos in the series. And uh, as usual, we might see you 